Hi guys and welcome to uh, 3D Friday number two. Uh, this is my second video um, and hopefully if you've seen the first video um, you'll be able to understand where I'm going with this. Um, 3D Friday is where I settle down on a Friday night with a bit of spare time and I'm going to go through how to create some random um, design on Google. Uh, so again I've done the same trick as I did before uh, last week I typed in 3D CAD exercises it's brought up a, a plethora of um, CAD drawings provided by um, Google and I've picked one at random and uh, in fact the one that we did last week was this one here so all I've done is I've, I've moved along a little bit and I've, uh, I've picked the next what I would call an interesting example um, the image was a little bit um, a little bit rough on the preview in Google and I can't seem to make it much bigger uh, and better in this view so I've had to go into the website so credit goes to um, actually not this website by the looks of it but it goes to um, cadexercises.blogspot.com uh, for providing this design and uh, and this is the design so this is what we're going to be producing uh, tonight um, so again um, same rules apply um, I'm going to go through it step by step showing you what in, what I'm doing uh, to, to create this 3D model um, again I'm going to be using AutoCAD 2014 I'm going to produce a, a separate series I think for um, Inventor and SolidWorks and we might even revisit the same models just for consistency um, but the the number one rule is is that I have not done this um, model before so um, this is me basically ad hocing it going at it um, first time just to show you how I would do it how I would make it up okay so you can see I've opened up um, AutoCAD already so the first thing I'm going to do is switch to the 3D basics toolbar across the top there we go and uh, we'll start uh, working this working this problem okay so the, the first thing that we need to do is recognize how this is made up so you've got um, <clears throat> basically um, a tube which has a 90 degree bend in it and they're 160 mil away from each other so you got from the center to the outside so there's a there's a 60 radius bend in the middle there and um, the way that we will create this is with what we call a sweep so we'll give, give that a go in a minute uh, and then obviously once you've got those two ends so this would give you this end and of course this end uh, we should be able to sketch onto those surfaces using our UCS trick that we learned last week and we should be able to create these um, flanges on the end. Um, there is some other things that are going to be introduced in this one. For instance, um, there might be some filleting, whether or not that's 2D or 3D filleting, I'm not sure, and also a chamfer. So there's a chamfer there and there's a chamfer there. So um, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a matter of how we tackle this. So uh, let's get a, let's get going, shall we? So um, first of all, uh, let's just lay down the path of what we're going to create. So let's just try creating this with a, a straight line that's up. Let's just put my polar snapping on. There we go. So this is um, 160 by 160. So if we go up directly. Put in 160 and then go to the uh, start the bomb. There we go. And that's going to be 160 as well. Let's just zoom in a bit. There we go. So there's our 160 out, 160 that way. Radius um, 60. So let's put in there um, fillet. And we've got the tool for a fillet okay the the fillet command that we're looking for is not the 3d fillet which you'll see under here which is fillet edge what we're looking to do is do a 2d fillet uh, which is in the 2d commands which we can flick to um, but if we know the shortcut we can just type on the keyboard which I do know um, you'll find this with AutoCAD as well you can just type the name of a, of a command and as you start typing it it will give you um, commands that fit that description so for instance even if I went back to just F you can see that's got F is for fillet or for find and if I type in FI it turns it into fillet um, filter and then FIL and then fillet so you, you can see that even if I just typed in F that would give me the command that I wanted anyway so I'm going to click on F 
Um, down the bottom here, you've got your um, your options for that command. So you've got undo, polyline, radius, trim, and multiple. So I want to change the radius because you can see here just above my command line, the radius at the moment is set to zero. So radius, set that to 60, pick my two lines. There we go. And it's created a nice fillet. Okay, so now that I've got this fillet, let's try to create a circle. So how am I going to do this? Because my UCS is in the wrong direction. You can see here, if I just uh, shift the middle mouse button, you can see that if I was to draw a circle onto the end of this, if I just show you actually, there you go. It's going to draw a circle like that which is in the wrong plane, it's in the wrong orientation. So what I want to do there, in fact actually I could um, not really cheat as such, what I could do is draw it there and do a 3D rotate and that's actually might what might be what I will do. Um, or, or I can right click my 3D indicator and I can change my axes. So I can rotate an axis. So for instance I could say that I want to rotate my let's have a look what will we need to rotate we need to rotate our y axis so that our x stands up in the z so let's try that a minute uh, rotate y axis oh. so if I put in there 90 ah oh, bingo that's exactly what I'm looking to do um, I might also just place my XYZ on the end there and what that's done I don't know if you can see that very well but as I'm rotating around the 000 is now smack bang on the end of my line which makes it very easy now just to pick a circle pop it on the 00 and make my circle as big as it needs to be so let's just go back and check what the dimension is so our circle is too short actually oh there you go 72 so 72 from the outside edge of our tube so uh, D for diameter 72 there we go okay so we're st it's starting to come together already so let's just sweep this along so sweep it's loading those um, 3d modules that we were talking about last week sometimes it can take a little while so what do we want to sweep well, we want to sweep that profile and what do we want to sweep it along this path now because it's m multiple entities I don't know if it's going to like this yeah I thought as much it doesn't like the fact that these are all separate objects so what I'm going to do here is just undo that a second there we go and what I'm going to do is look down on my object again change my UCS back to WCS so we're back on the world coordinates like so and I'm going to do a new polyline and a polyline is um, a line that is made up of multiple segments um, but it is still considered as one entity so um, I know from previous experience you can sweep along um, a path that changes direction with a polyline so let's just give this a try then so um, start polyline there um, and we want to go to the end point so it's just as well actually we've laid this line out because it now gives us the opportunity to just snap to existing geometry so out to that 100 point okay now instead of this going to here which would just draw a straight line what I want to do is arc around this so I can pick on the options for my polyline pick arc it's going to ask me for radius so R for radius and the radius is still 60 okay and he's going over to there now why is it going that way let's just see if it will let me go the other way okay and then alpha line again Bump. and then return can I flick that over yeah there we go okay so now I've got this one continuous path which is a polygon 
okay uh, so that hopefully should be all I needed to create that sweep so let's go ahead and create that sweep again ah, perfect okay so um, all I did there was click on sweep click my profile space will return to move on to the next piece which is then to pick the path it picked up my poly um, polyline okay it's left behind the segments that weren't the polyline so the three bits that I made beforehand so I can get rid of them because I don't need them anymore so at the moment it looks kind of unimpressive because it's in 2d again if I just change that to conceptual you can see I've got this nice solid pipe all the way through okay so let's put my 2d wireframe back on again so I can see what's going on okay do we have in AutoCAD the shell command because that would make life a lot easier because the shell command if it exists here um, I don't see it but if you don't know if um, it does exist or not you can again just start typing it and sure enough there it is shell uh, what shell does is a command that's, uh, that I know of from um, inventor and um, oh no it doesn't quite do the same as what I expected to do in AutoCAD okay so it's not doing that um, in AutoCAD and in, in, sorry in Inventor uh, if you use shell you can click on an object and you can click on two end pieces like this and you can specify um, a thickness of the material say for instance one millimeter and it would hollow this out removing the two ends and give you a one millimeter thick wall going through so that would do the job of uh, of hollowing this channel line in the middle um, but as that doesn't exist in AutoCAD or as far as I know it doesn't exist uh, what I'm going to need to do is put in another circle put in another um, sweep path and um, and remove that material as a subtraction so in fact what I'm going to do is make myself a little make my life a little bit easier and just undo my uh, to the point where I have my there we go that path again and I'm going to do another polyline and I'm going to do the same thing again so from there it will pick it up no okay and the reason it's not picking it up is because um, am I on the right plane? I am on the right plane so it should be okay it should pick it up okay so let's just try that again so P line there he is, PL even. Pick that center point out to there, which is a hundred center um, arc. A for arc. Uh, R for radius. Sixty radius out to that point, and then L for line, and then finish end point. Okay, same tactic as we used before. Flick that arc over. There we go. So that gives us our second uh, sweep path that we're going to use. And again, um, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually sketch a circle onto the flat plane that's already there on that center. And the inside, the bit that I'm going to be removing is. Hmm, interesting. There we go, 60. So 60 diameter in the middle. That's the bit that's being removed. Okay, so D for diameter, 60. That's going to be swept along. So sweep that profile along that path. There we go. And again, looking at it from a conceptual point of view, doesn't look that impressive because obviously they're on top of each other. But if I go into 2D now and I do a subtract, Let's subtract the big bit of material that we want to remove material from, space, and then the little bit in the middle that we want to remove. There we go. And again, just to confirm that it has done it, conceptual, there we are. Excellent, just what we wanted. Okay. So, um, and this has given us that, that base that I was talking about. By doing it this way, I've got this um, face here to sketch upon and this is the sketch area that I'm going to use to create our flanges and hopefully this might actually be a quite quick video because all we really need to do is create one flange um, as a separate body 
and we could potentially copy it across to the other side and then we can bond them together with the union command like we have done in the past so let's give this a go <clears throat> um, apologies by the way my vo voice is getting a bit croaky because uh, as you can tell it's a little bit late a um, little bit later than I expected I've had a bit of a long day today as well so hopefully my voice won't give in uh, let's give this a go right okay so back to here um, this flange uh, unit okay is made up of a number of circles now again uh, I'm going to use the same philosophy as before easy to create um, solid bits of geometry and then knock holes into it afterwards so we'll create this outline first um, and then once we've created that outline uh, we'll put the holes in afterwards so um, the important thing here though is where does the flange um, start and end so you can see that my 160 that we did originally okay takes us to the bottom of the flange so we're building if we were to um, sketch onto this uh, face here if I just highlight it a second there you go if we were to build onto this we would build it be building the bottom of the flange not the top of the flange um, so this is the bottom and that's the top so let's just start with um, and also we've got to note the orientation as well so these flanges they have their um, uh, bolt holes um, aligned with the bend okay so these if we were looking straight at it it bends away from this bolt hole so that's what we want to look to achieve okay that seems straightforward enough okay so let's um, let's do this let's go for a circle so C for circle or circle up here I'm gonna click on or highlight this face so it becomes um, that's our face that we'll be working on and you can see there it's picked up the center there when I was hovering over it if I shift right click that gives me the option to override the snaps and say I want I'm only interesting in, in centers there we go and it's picked up that center there perfect okay so the reason I'm picking up the circle is because I want to create this outside circle here so you can see here there's a circle here with a radius of 42 this makes up the main part and then we've got these two outer circles which are then tangentially joined to create this flange uh, but obviously this um, main circle in the center is concentric to our to our um, tube so this is a radius 42 um, what are we in we radius mode I think we are yes so let's put in there 42 nice okay and let's just orientate ourselves a little bit better okay I'm not going to fall into the pitfalls of the what we did last week which is where my uh, my 3d indicator took a long time for it to update okay yes doing what it does best taking a really long time to navigate around okay for some reason or other, my navigation cube seems to be playing up so I'm, I'm gonna sort of roll with that and just avoid that pitfall altogether and I'm gonna turn this into conceptual just to make me give me a bit more confidence in which orientation I've got okay so I'm looking then to have these two circles here and here so that they are in alignment with this bend so let's have a look at our first circle then our first circle has a radius of 20 uh, and it's a hundred and twenty mil away from its counterpart on the other side uh, and that's really all you need to know so you know that it's 60 mil apart because obviously half of a hundred and twenty is sixty um, yeah okay so let's give that a go so let's um, put in a circle again on that plane and again snap if I can find it there we go snap to its center pump okay and it was radius uh, was it radius or diameter 20 radius 20 okay so radius 20 wow that seemed really large of course it is because the outside circle okay so that's fine let's grab that circle and I'm gonna move it just by M on the keyboard click anywhere 
and I'm shifting it out you can see there it's snapping to my uh, to a degree of, or sorry an angle of 270 and I want to move that out by oh we already know this 60 there we go and then I'm going to copy it so CO on the keyboard or uh, this button up here which allows you to copy I'm going to copy it in the other direction by uh, 120 and then space to finish okay and that gives us our 120 mil apart okay and it gives us these two big uh, 20 radius circles on the outside so if I look at this um, on the right hand side there we go that should hopefully look in proportion to this one I know last week's example didn't wasn't proportionate to um, to what we saw on the internet page but um, this actually doesn't look too bad that looks fairly similar okay so um, the next bit then is to join up the gaps and all we do there is we grab a line and the trick here is that we want to create a line on this plane again in fact because we're working on this plane so much instead of having to snap to this plane what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to grab my 3d indicator in the bottom left here right click it and there's an option in here called face and what face does is it lets you pick a face in or on your model that you're interested in and it will set your XY plane to that face so if I click on that uh, and just click accept of course you can flip the the X and the Y so that um, it makes sense so you do have a positive X and a positive Y but if you're not working with um, coordinates and you're not um, doing anything specific with um, positive and negative X and Y it really doesn't matter so I'm just going to click accept there okay so you can see there what's happened there is now my grid is now sat uh, smack bang on the front of that um, of that tube face so that gives me now the power to just start drawing in 2d in this area oh my 3d indicator is playing up again okay so let's go line uh, shift right click and I'm gonna try and snap to a tangent so there we go it's picking any tangent there and I want to find a tangent on this circle so again shift right click tangent there we go I'm going to do the same again on this side um, sometimes it can be a, a real nuisance to find a tangent so shift right clicking is probably the, the, the option to go for to be honest there we go and um, I suppose you could do the same with the other side or, or you could just mirror them and that's what I'm going to do here because I'm just being lazy uh, and to be honest in the real world that's probably what you want to do you wouldn't want to take the time to to have to, to do this twice so in the modify options there is a mirror command okay or MI on the keyboard I've picked my two objects already so it's now asking me for a mirror line so I just pick a point for instance this quadrant and this quadrant and it then asks you do you want to erase the original objects yes or no so it's already defaulted to N which is no and there's our other two parts okay um, the only thing that's left to do now is to sort of clean up the um, the construction bits and pieces on the outside um, so all I'm going to do there is oh sorry on the inside because uh, we want the outside to stay as is um, so what I'm going to do there is um, trim this away um, and I think the trim command is under modify it's there okay and again TR on the keyboard if you want to trim away trims a very cool tool because it lets you pick things that you want to use as cutting surfaces so for instance if I wanted to um, cut the inside of this circle here what I could do is I could click on this line and this line to say that that's the limits of the cut space and then click this circle and it would trim where those two lines started and finished um, but also what you can do is go back into the command which is spacebar uh, which repeats the last command and you can do spacebar again and what that does is it defaults to everything is a cutting face so for instance if I was to trim this circle here you can see what's happening it is trimming it from that line down to that circle and that's it 
so use it to your advantage if you know how to use trim or sorry if you have the interfaces set up correctly the world's your oyster you know how to grab the bits that you want you can trim it away or if you're a little bit heavy hand you just want to get rid of a load of content very quickly you can just do this trim space space and then just grab a bunch of geometry in the middle now admittedly it's picking up 3d content as well which is not helping but if I um, there we go it's got rid of a bunch of content there okay can't grip those bits oh yeah of course trying to grab a lines off my 3d geometry in the background it's not helping okay there we are so we've got this outline of our flange so that's the shape that we want to create now as you may have already gathered um, in 3d it can be a little bit difficult to work with geometry that's made up this way because this is made up of a number of parts which I would normally show you in properties but that's still not working from last week I need to find out why that is um, normally when you do something like this where you select multiple parts in AutoCAD you get a breakdown of what those objects are and you can individually select them and say right okay I want to change the properties of that part but for some reason or other mine's not working and I'm not sure why but we'll come back to that um, but yeah when you create um, geometry in 3D if I just flip my world coordinates a moment back to WCS okay and just show you two things here so let's just create um, a rectangle and if I create a rectangle like so and extrude it okay I get a solid shape and the reason for that is because a rectangle is seen as a closed profile but also it's seen as one entity which is um, a nice way of working it just says okay you obviously have this area that you want to convert to a volume and it does it very nicely however if I were to do the same thing again but this time do it as a bunch of lines if I can get it to line up properly my object snap settings are not set up properly so let's just sort that out now there is object snap tracking object snap tracking by the way just lets you do this or you can snap off of uh, another object that isn't actually um, on the path of the object you're, you're snapping so for instance I'm not actually connecting this line to that corner but I'm connecting it to a point of apparent intersection if that makes any sense and then close this loop okay so this um, profile that I've just drawn is still perfectly acceptable it's still a closed profile with um, a area but because it's made up of four entities okay rather than one just have a look at what happens here if I extrude these I get that now what AutoCAD has done is it's interpreted what I've asked it to do as wanting to create a surface instead so these um, walls that you see are um, infinitely thin walls virtual walls if you will called surfaces and surfaces um, are very good for, for various reasons in engineering um, but um, one thing they don't make good for is turning well actually no that's a lie I was gonna say they don't make good for turning into 3d but they make excellent for doing that because if you want to make anything really complex surfaces are the way to go and you can convert this into um, a 3d uh, cube just as easily um, by doing this and then boxing it off if you wanted to or um, creating a sculpt as well and I'll show you that later on but um, but yeah the point that I'm making is is that if I try to extrude my fillet now sorry my flange even there's my flange and if I try to extrude that now I will get that okay which is not what I want now if I go back to my box example there we go and I take one of these sides a single surface okay and I extrude it I get a volume 
I get a solid object okay which is what I was trying to achieve in the first place so I'm going back to my example you can go from a surface to a solid very easily and that's what I plan to do here what you have under the create rollout um, is an option called planar now planar lets you turn um, a bunch of objects like so into a surface so once you have a surface and I extrude the surface I then have a volume which is your solid so to create that flange all I did is create the outline as multiple entities create a planar or planar object um, from that and then I extruded the planar object to create to create a solid so let's see how much our flange needs to be extruded by it's 10 mil so let's go in that direction by 10 mil and there we have it so to create this flange arrangement um, didn't actually take too much uh, and the beauty of this at the moment is that it is um, smack bang on the end of this uh, tube so I can still see the outline of the object beneath it so what I could do now if I wanted to be a little bit clever is I could cut away a hole big enough for my tube so that this fitted nice and squarely up against it in fact let's do that now so let's go in here draw a circle on this face and I want to pick if I can find it the center of that circle there we are boom and I want to make that can I snap to the center there we go it's not snap to sorry the uh, quadrant not the center and then I'm going to extrude that through um, there he is extrude Do you know what sometimes um, I get so used to using keyboard shortcuts that I forget where the uh, the buttons are even though they're in really obvious places um, you might be thinking well why am I not just subtracting the tube from my uh, flange solid and the reason for that is because my tube is um, hollow so the hollow area wouldn't cut my flange and I'd be left with basically a disc that's just floating in space so what I'm going to do is just put in an yet another solid okay which is going to be the size of my tube inside of my flange and it's going to be used as a cutting surface then to remove material from my flange and that should give us this nice tight fit around my um, tube going into its flange so let's do that now let's uh, grab that circle um, okay I'm struggling to pick that circle up so I'm going to introduce you to a yet another tool uh, down the bottom here there is this selection cycling or control W on the keyboard and what this allows you to do is when you're in 3D space sometimes it can be difficult to click on things because things are on top of each other or potentially um, they're very very close to each other and you can't distinguish which one's which so if you can see that happening you can see here I get these two little blue boxes above my mouse pointer and that's indicating that there's more than one object in that area and that it might want to give me an option so if I click on that okay yes there's definitely something wrong with my AutoCAD because they should have names in there as to what they are okay but you can see the principle is still working as I hover over these it's highlighting what they are so you can see there that the bottom option is the only one that's giving me the outline of the circle so that's obviously a circle there click on that and click space and I want to extrude that back now, it doesn't actually matter how much I extrude it back by because again this is like my cookie cutter this is just a bit of material that's going to be used to cut away so let's just say in fact actually we'll make our lives a little bit easier by making it really large so we can pick it without confusing it with the uh, with the tube so I'll put it there okay so subtract from the flange our cookie cutter there we go and there's our material removed away now as tempting as it is to weld these two parts together with a union what I want to do is complete this flange and then copy it across to the other side and then weld on both ends at the same time and um, so I'm going to resist that urge for the minute and just carry on with this example get these two holes in and I think that's all we need to do for that so let's give this a go uh, those two holes 
um, are going to be concentric to the existing circles on the end and they are diameter 20 so circle again on this face and you can see there oh I did have it then for a second I've got the center of that circle there again if you're struggling to pick up the centers shift right click center there he is okay and for some strange reason even though I've hovered over this face it's picked the wrong uh, orientation so let's just try that one more time circle There he is. Okay, and uh, this time it's D for diameter, 20, and we know that these happen to be 120 mil apart. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab that circle. I can take my multi select off now as well, as we can't really see it anyway. And I'm going to copy that CO in this direction by 120. Okay, just to confirm, actually, it is 120, wasn't it? Yeah, 120 mil apart. And then I'm going to extrude both of them at the same time. So let's go into extrude that circle. Oh, Mr. Mark, let's try that again. Okay, back that way. There we go. Okay, I think I might have missed the mark again. Sometimes it's difficult to see what's going on. I'm just going to turn this into. 2D wireframe again. Let's just see what I've got. Do you know what? I think it actually snapped the back face. Uh, we'll see soon enough because if I um, subtract that in a minute, turn it back to conceptual, we'll see if we've got a clean cut hole all the way through. So let's just try that now. Subtract from my flange that object, that object, back to conceptual. Yeah. Okay, so unwittingly I uh, I managed to snap to the back plane and it's uh, it's given me a nice clean cut all the way through, so that's good. Okay, let's go back to 2D wireframe again. Um, I think that is all I need to do with that flange. Okay, so what I'm going to do there is copy it. I'm going to copy the whole flange with its holes. Um, copy. Um, it doesn't actually matter how I copy this but what I'm going to do is just make my life a little bit easier I'm going to copy from its center to the center of this circle now I know it's going to be in the wrong orientation and then I'm going to say space or return just to finish the copy um, this is where 2d doesn't sort of help because there's a lot of stuff going on and you can see 2d it does look a little bit confusing so if I just turn it back to conceptual you can see what's going on there it's got it the wrong way around. So let's just um, let's 3D rotate this thing. So to 3D rotate something, there's a couple of commands. There's um, 3DR, which is short for 3D rotate, but there's also this selection tool up here. And so far we've been moving stuff around with the move gizmo, but there's also the rotate gizmo. So let's click on rotate gizmo. And what that means is that when I click on an object now, it gives me the option to rotate it around the the X, Y, and Z. Um, I think my screen recorder might be causing it to lag a little bit because it's taken a really long time to highlight. But there he is anyway. So it's obvious there that the blue axis or the Z axis for my 3D indicator in the corner is the axis that I want to rotate around. So I click on that and it's given me some very nice easy options there of 90 degrees. Okay. Um, I think it's actually, even though it's snapping to 90 degrees, it will let me put in other ones. So what I'm going to do is force its hand there and just type in 90, just to be on the safe side. Okay, let's just look at that straight on. Yeah, strangely that is not sat exactly where I want it, which is kind of concerning. I thought I'd managed to hit the nail on the head with that one, but okay, we'll give this a go. Let's um, push this back to the move gizmo and we'll change this to move this object by its center if I can find it there we go and let's put it on the center of that circle that's better okay and just to make sure that we have got this lined up properly
yeah that looks good to me okay so the basic outline is is pretty good um, my computer is slowing down quite a bit so do you know what I'm just gonna take I'm gonna air on the uh, the side of caution here I'm just going to pop a copy of that onto my desktop just in case okay okay what's left to do then we've got this uh, radius to do in here now this radius um, is a 3d radius and I suspect it probably won't let me do that while we have two separate objects it's going to want this to be one object so we're going to have to do our union before we do that and the other thing that we can do which maybe I should have done before I did the copy actually is to do this um, chamfer here but again it could be um, it's hard to tell in this drawing but 4 mil, um, four mil by 4 mil at 45 degrees might be that it needs to be part of this tube still in fact actually that would be a chamfer on the tube anyway I think rather than on your fillet because the tube yes is on the inside still okay okay so let's um, let's go ahead and bond this so we'll say union uh, this object and this object and this object space there we go this is now one singular object all one piece uh, let's go ahead and put our uh, chamfers in because that's probably an easiest one to do so chamfer there we go chamfer edge uh, chamfer edge just allows you to pick an edge so this is a 3d edge and this is a 3d edge it's not let me pick it okay I think yes as it's saying down there um, edges must belong to one face okay so obviously it's not happy with the fact that I'm picking two two edges that are potentially linked so uh, let's just do this one at a time so um, down here you've got loop or distance so distance and we're gonna put in four for the first distance and four for the second distance that means you've got a 45 degree cut at four by four um, hit return again that gives you a preview to show you what's going on and then I'm going to hit return again to confirm so there we go and there is our chamfer nothing to it at all okay let's try and do the other side so uh, spacebar to, to repeat the command uh, you can see there the distance 1 and distance 2 is already set to 4 because it's picked up that was the last used um, values so again return and then return again and there is our chamfer at the other end so that was nice and easy okay uh, and let's try this fillet now so the fillet is 3 mil um, on both necks that seems pretty easy okay so let's orientate this around so we can see the back sides of this uh, let's go into our edit command and we'll, we'll click on fillet edge okay um, R for radius uh, 3 for 3 mil and we'll pick this edge uh, this edge again we might still get the same error as before nope it's quite happy to do this this time return there's our preview return again to commit and that's it that's all there is to it so um, yeah that's a, it's a nice example actually that's come together quite nicely um, we could go into the drawing environment and show you how to put this together in fact actually I wouldn't mind just showing you um, a little bit more about viewports because we sort of whipped through that last week I sort of gave you a glance at uh, what you can do in a 2d environment for drawing and annotation I didn't really go into any real detail um, I do plan on doing uh, tutorials on that later on um, obviously once I get a bit more of an audience more subscribers and so on I'll, I'll put more detail into how I'm doing certain things and uh, other options that you can take with certain commands as well uh, let's just do a quick save okay and let's go into the layout environment so there we go there's our there's our object and uh, if we wanted to create a representation very similar to this we could do that quite easily so let's do um, a cross section first of all um, the cross section is based off of this view which is looking down one of the tubes so if I were to um, actually just get rid of this view altogether because we don't need that one and uh, we're going to go into uh, do we need to go into 2D annotation? You might be able to do it from this uh, toolbar. No, don't think so. Okay, so we're going to have to go to drafting and annotation. 
and we'll go to the view screen once it comes up or should I say layout screen there it goes layout screen okay and uh, what layer do we want we want to look down the barrel Ooh. that's spun around pretty quickly without me noticing we want to look down the barrel of the back or potentially the right let's just have a look yeah right okay so the right view is the best orientation for this in fact there we go look it says down there right I didn't know I did it the right way around but <laughs> it looks like it's turned out okay so uh, the right view is what we want so let's go back to uh, layout space and I'm gonna put down a base view from model space it takes a little while for it to pick up the uh, pick up speed basically and uh, load the modules but once it's done there we go look it's loading the, the modules down here because I haven't played with it today there we go and we want to scroll through our list of views for right there we go and I'm going to pop that one just down there for a second and then click exit and it's given us other orientations so let's have a look we want um, actually just that one for the minute because we're going to do a cross section of that one so I'm going to right click that and say we're done I'm going to change that view edit the view I'm going to turn it to hidden lines visible lines only there we go and then I'm going to do a cross section a cross section should be nice and easy although I've never done one before in AutoCAD it should be the same sort of principles so you've got half uh, sorry full half offset aligned and from object so I'm just going to go for a full uh, click the view so that's the view and it should ask me where I want to start from so I want to start from sort of this point cross to here there we go and there's our cross section so if I just move this up a little bit to so around about here somewhere and then click exit there we go a cross section with um, view label as well so it's quite simple in AutoCAD to create a cross section and that's one of the benefits of using a CAD system like AutoCAD over you know pen and paper um, I mean obviously this one was done in CAD anyway but uh, previous example, our previous example from last week it might have been drawn up on a, a drawing board but to have that um, mental image in your head to be able to create the cross section is a, a feat in itself so having a CAD system that can easily do it with as you've seen just a, the drawing of a line makes it an incredible, um, incredibly uh, important and well basically a tool that everyone should have uh, you know if you're serious about engineering and creating content like drawings and such these are really tools that you need to have because um, yes you can create this um, sort of content in AutoCAD freehand or in another CAD package by freehand but um, it would take um, considerable more thought how to lay this out rather than just creating the drawing so um, so yeah um, again uh, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed uh, creating this shape uh, with me and um, and uh, If you do again, if you have any more um, ideas about what you want to cover obviously CAD related content if you want me to cut up a particular design that you have in mind or um, You want to send something in and I can uh, have a look at it for you um, then please do um, the details will be underneath the video as before and and um, so like and subscribe share it on Facebook tell your friends um, if this takes off in a big way obviously I'll do a lot more videos and hopefully I'll see you guys next week thank you very much